In this episode of Student of Life with Joe Hafner, we address the question, why do people fall short of their potential? Joe will examine the three factors that determine whether or not you can maximize your potential, the five primary reasons why people fall short of their full potential, and much more. For show notes, links, and other resources, please visit studentoflifepodcast.com forward slash nine. That's studentoflifepodcast.com forward slash nine. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to Student of Life, the podcast for people seeking personal and professional fulfillment. I am Joe Hafner, your host. I'm glad that you're with me today. I know you have lots of choices you can make out in the podcast world, and I am so pleased that you picked mine, and I will do everything in my power to make it worth your time and effort to be here. So today, we are addressing the question, why do people fall short of their potential? I think everyone has greatness within them. I think, do, you, do you believe you have greatness within you? I think God has put greatness in everybody. And largely, it's a matter of, are you doing, playing your part to achieve that potential that God has put in you? So what I want to do is spend some time today talking about why people fall short. I'd like to start by maybe talking a little bit about my definition of potential. So potential to me is the maximum level of success, fulfillment, whatever word you want to talk about in there, you could possibly reach. If you squeezed out every ounce of that special something in you to do what you were created to do and you overcame every obstacle and you shed off all the negatives that come with you, what you would achieve then, that would be your full potential. I think very few people achieve their full potential because it's very, really, really easy to get caught up in things that get you off track, that get you focused. A lot of people believe that they don't deserve to achieve that potential, that that they, for some reason, have done something in their lives where they're not allowed to do that, where they're not meant to do that. You ever hear people say, well, I'm just not meant to be successful, or I'm just not meant to have money, or I'm just not meant to, to be happy. Those people are deceiving themselves. We'll talk more about deception of yourself later on in the podcast, but Back to the definition of potential. Another great definition of it that I really like is the best version of yourself. So if you take all the skills, experiences, qualities that you've got and you distill it down to what is the best you can possibly be, that's achieving your potential when you have that best part. So those are my definitions of potential. I think that everyone should be striving to achieve theirs I think too many people don't work very hard to achieve it. But I spent some time over the last couple of weeks just kind of thinking about this because I, like most people, I believe uh, that I'm, not, I'm falling short of what God's created me to do. And there's more that I can do. There's more that I can be. There's more that I can deliver to the world. If I can find a way to deliver to the world every ounce of potential that's been put in me, I certainly want to do that. So I believe that there are three things that have a direct impact on whether your potential is maximized or your potential is pulled backwards. And those three things are aptitude, environment, and desire. So let's talk about these. Aptitude. I think everybody has some natural abilities. And that would be going back to your purpose. Or you hear people say, what's your superpower? Or what is your your area of greatest strength? And that would be your, your purpose in life, the reason you were created. That's your natural ability. That's your aptitude. Additionally, what determines your aptitude is the level of schooling or education that you get. It's your character and your integrity. If we're going to what I talk about, the building blocks of fulfillment, it would be like your core values. What do you believe? What you believe is going to play a key role in whether or not you are going to achieve your potential. If you believe things that are negative or things that, that are destructive, your potent, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna move forward towards your potential. If you believe in things like integrity and honesty and serving other people and those types of things, that's gonna move you towards your potential. So your core values play a big role in your aptitude. 
The second one was environment. So environment, the easiest definition of environment is your physical location. Where are you placed? You know, if you have two people and one is born in poverty and lives in a mud hut in the third world, their potential is limited compared to someone born in Western society who has you know, access to school, access to the internet, access to food. There's some people, their whole potential is destroyed by the fact that they can't get their hands on food every day. But in, our, in, the Western, in Western society, we don't have those things limiting us. So that environment is a huge, huge factor on whether or not you're gonna have the opportunity to achieve your potential or not. Another area of your environment, it would be your culture. Now, like uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about culture, developing your personal culture, developing your team culture. Culture is, is the environment of a group of people. And it can be the culture of a nation, the culture of a church, the culture of an organization, the culture of a company, or the culture of you and your friends. So that culture is going to play a huge role in whether or not you're going to achieve your potential or you're going to be pulled away from it. If your culture, if you're hanging out with friends who spend all day smoking dope and you know, playing video games, odds are you're gonna be smoking dope and playing video games instead of out there figuring out how to achieve your potential. If you're hanging out with a bunch of overachievers who are trying to come up with new ways to change the world, the odds are you're gonna have a better chance of achieving your potential with that group of people. Your culture of the groups that you spend the most time with and your personal culture, those play a huge role in whether you have the opportunity to achieve your potential or whether there's limiting factors in the way keeping you from getting there. Another part of your environment would be your mentors or your role models, the people that you learn from, the people that show you the way that people have gone before you that you're watching. The next area is desire. Now, desire to me is directly related to your purpose in life. Why did God create you? Are you aware of why God created you? Because if you have a purpose and a vision of what you want to be, and that is so strong that it propels you towards it, that desire is going to carry you towards your potential. Now, if you are not protecting your confidence or your willpower or your energy and they're being depleted before your day even gets going, that's going to pull you backwards. So that desire is going to play a huge role in whether or not you are moving towards that potential God put in you or you are being pulled away from it. So aptitude, environment, and desire. Take a look at those things. Which of them are, are working in your favor and which of them are working against you and which of them can you change so that they're working in your favor? I think it's a great thing to think about. In America, we're having an epidemic of lost potential. You have people in their 30s who spend all day playing video games. You have people who have been taught growing up to be victims instead of to put, push aside whatever limiting factors are in front of them and be successful by pushing past those. One of the things I, I, always, like to, I always like to look to sports for stuff like this because when you wanna see if someone achieves their potential in a given sport, it's very easy to see because it's all about performance on the field. You know, when you're dealing with life or business, it's a little more gray area where you can't quite tell quite as easily in sports. Sports, either you're a winner or you're not a winner. You're either achieving, breaking records or you're not breaking records. You're propelling yourself to the top of the, of the sports world or you're not. Interestingly, as I was preparing to do this podcast, I happened to watch a uh, ESPN 30 for 30 documentary about Dwight Gooden and about Daryl Strawberry. And it was, it was something that was very interesting to me because I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and um, when the Mets won the World Series in 1986, I was 16 years old, and I was a Mets fan. The reason I was a Mets fan was because people who were, who were growing up back then in the 80s, you know, even though we had cable, we didn't have a whole lot of channel choices. Well, for whatever reason, Buffalo got WOR, I think it was, out of New York City, and WOR played all the Mets games. So as a kid who is sports crazy, I would watch the Mets and I became a Mets fan. So I remember when Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry came on the scene and watching this documentary reminded me of the incredible potential that both of those guys had to revolutionize their, the, the game of baseball. They were considered once in a lifetime talents 
for one year, they, they really all came together with some other players and they ended up winning the World Series. Daryl Strawberry came in the league in 83, and Dwight Gooden came in the league in 84, and they won the World Series in 86. And people thought the Mets were going to be a 10, 15-year dynasty because these guys were so good and were going to carry them. But what happened was their environment, if you look at the environment of the Mets back then, it was a big party going on, lots of drugs, lots of drinking, lots of problems that happened there. So that dragged them down. If you look at, so if you look at those three factors, you know, you have your aptitude. These guys had all the physical skills to be great and to achieve, to be the best ever, really. Dwight Gooden was thought he could be the best ever pitcher in Major League history. And so he had the aptitude. The desire, they both had the desire. They both knew from a young age that they, all they wanted to do is play baseball. Daryl Strawberry grew up in Southern California and he lived in, the, in a, a difficult area and he wanted to escape that and he used baseball to do it. Dwight Gooden, him and his father, their whole relationship was about baseball. Everything they did together was about baseball. So his father's dream for him was to be great as a baseball player and his dream was to be great to please his father. So they had the desire. And so then you have the environment. So they had the environment that they were in New York City, you know, a, a kid from Southern California, a kid from Florida, who had no, you know, in their early 20s, and they had nothing to stop them from just going off the deep end and, and drugs, women, drinking, all the things that happened to the point where they were so far in their addiction that Dwight Gooden... When the Mets won the World Series in 1986, he left the clubhouse after that last game and nobody saw him again for a couple of days. He missed the parade. Daryl Strawberry went by his house to see where he was. He wasn't there and Gooden was off uh, in a drug-induced coma pretty much and missed the ticker tape parade to honor the Mets. That's something you can't go back and relive. So you look at the two of them, they were great for a couple years but they had so much potential to just be the best ever. And it was squandered. In your life, when you look at your potential, when you look at the areas where you want to be great, where are those areas where you have something that's cheating you out of your greatness? Where are the areas where you are maybe lying to yourself or engaging in activity or behavior that doesn't line up with where your potential should be taking you and what are you doing to correct those things so what i did is i laid out why do people fall short of their potential and i really came up with about five different areas that are broad concepts and what i want to do is go through them talk about what i mean by by each one and then talk a little bit about how do you overcome that if that's what's holding you back right so the first area that causes people to, to fall short of their potential is they're lazy. By lazy, I mean they're complacent, they're satisfied with where they're at, they don't want it enough to be great, they don't have any goals or vision for their life, they've just kind of settled into a comfort zone and they're just kind of going along and they've basically given up and said, this is who I am, this is who I'm gonna be and I don't have any desire to be anything more. If you're in that situation, and you have the, a glimpse of saying, you know what, I want more than this. I don't, wanna, I don't want my comfort zone to be the size of my lazy boy where I sit and eat chips and watch TV. What can you do to break that cycle of laziness? Well, it comes down to your why. Why do you not want to be lazy anymore? What is your purpose? Have you thought about why God created you and what you should be doing and where you can bring value to the world? Have you thought about your family and what they need and what you can deliver to them by achieving your potential. You need something that's such a powerful why that you will do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Lazy is hard to overcome without some goals or a vision or, or values. And quiet time is not lazy time because quiet time is that time that gives your brain a little oxygen. And that oxygen allows the fire to light that gets, your, get, gets things going. But a great way for someone who's just complacent and over, you know, satisfied with mediocrity to start is to give yourself some quiet time and think about what you'd like to be great at. Think about 
What is your purpose? What are, what are you good at doing? What did God create you to do in this world? And spend time thinking about that and imagining what life would be like if you really got good at that, if you really honed your skills there. And is that going to be enough to propel you out of your Barclow lounger and into the world to do something? If you're lazy, you need to find a why that's going to stop you from being lazy. So that's the first one. The second reason that people fall short of their potential is they're scared. So scared can also mean, you know, not like, not like terrified, trembling in your boots scared, but no confidence. You never want to leave your comfort zone because you don't know what's out there. Or maybe you failed in the past and you're afraid you're going to fail again. Or maybe you didn't quite measure up one time and you were humiliated or, or, or made fun of and you don't want to experience that again. Everybody is scared at times. It all comes back to your comfort zone. Stepping out of your comfort zone is scary. And you know what? If, if I'm comfortable with something you're scared about, it's not a big deal to me, but it's a huge deal to you. What I'm scared about is a big deal to me. So figure out what it is that you're scared about and do it scared. That's the best way to do it. Just plow ahead and do it scared and don't worry about it and expand that comfort zone. Because if you are not every day stretching your comfort zone, it's shrinking. And I've said this before, eventually most Americans, their comfort zone shrinks to the size of their lounge chair that they're watching TV in. So if you want to get to a point where you're sitting on the sofa watching TV eating chips and that's all you want to do with your life, then don't do anything that scares you. I believe that you should do something that scares you every day because that's going to teach you that you don't really have to be afraid of it. And every day you can move forward. Every day you can expand your comfort zone. And every day you can experience what it's like to step out. You know what? If you're not good at something, the first time you do it, you're not going to be good at it. So when you try something new, you're not going to be good at it most likely the first time you try it. If you spend your life expecting to be great at everything you try, that's where you get scared and your comfort zone shrinks. You need to take the attitude of a learner and not be afraid to look silly or goofy and just do it and then laugh about it when, when it's tough and try it again until you get better at it. And that's how you learn about different things and maybe pick something you're going to be great at to try different things. So if you're scared, expand your comfort zone and do it scared. The third thing, there's people who are undisciplined. And by undisciplined, I mean they're distracted. They don't know how to prioritize things. They don't know how to grind. They're not able to focus for long periods of time to move the ball forward in what they're working on. They're not doing what it takes to earn success, greatness, fulfillment, the things they want in their life. Undisciplined comes from people with a short attention span or you, you know, the dreaded multitasker who thinks they're doing five things at once but really is doing five things badly because they can't focus on any of them. Undisciplined comes from trying to stretch too thin and do too much. Undiscipline comes from having sitting at your desk with your smartphone out looking at your text and trying to watch emails while they're flowing in and trying to do work at the same time and wondering why you don't get anything done. If you spend all day and at the end of the day you're exhausted because you've been so busy, but when you look at the important things you haven't accomplished anything, that means you're probably undisciplined and you need to learn how to focus. Going back to the things we've talked about before, a great way to gain focus is to set aside an hour or two to work on things in your purpose, where you have one thing that you need to do. Go read Gary Keller's book, The One Thing. See how he starts, how he does each day, where he picks one thing he's going to tackle and he closes himself up in a room and doesn't leave that room till that one thing is completed. If you can get that kind of focus with one thing, now you can move on and do it with other things. But it's a matter, it's a matter of changing the way that you do things. It's, it's important to understand if you have a certain level of success, typically what got you to your current level of success is not going to get you to the next level of success. You have to change things. I always, I always like to go back to the example of Tiger Woods. I know that we're not supposed to talk about him anymore because he's had some personal problems, but when he was the best golfer in the world and blowing everybody else away and people were scared to death of being paired with him on the final round on a Sunday, he deconstructed his whole swing, got a new swing coach and changed everything because 
he wasn't competing against the other players. He was competing against the greatest of all time. And he knew his current swing wasn't good enough to be one of the greatest of all time. And he was sold out to try and reach his full potential as a golfer. So are you doing things now just like you've always done them and expecting a different result? Because if you are, you may have something you need to deconstruct, take half a step back, reconstruct better, and move forward. And a lot of times getting disciplined and focused is one of those things. People are used to dealing with a whole bunch of things at once and they have to change the way they operate in order to be more disciplined. We've talked about that with routines. Go back and listen to my uh, two episodes ago about protecting your energy and your confidence. And that's a great way to add some discipline to your life. All right, so the fourth reason people fall short of their potential is they're deceived. So usually... By deceived, I mean you're lying to yourself. You're pretending that things are fine when they're not. You've convinced yourself that everything's going to go great when it really isn't. And you're not willing to admit that maybe you have a problem you need to address or an issue you need to solve. Another reason people lie to themselves, they expect things to be easy. They expect success to be easy. They expect the things worth having in life to be easy to achieve. And typically, it's been my experience that the best things in life are very difficult to achieve. The things that are worth going after, the things that give you fulfillment, the things where you can operate in your purpose, those are difficult to do. Also, you see people who make excuses and they act like the world's against them or they act like a victim. Those people are deceived because I'll tell you, sure, if you're you're a child, and your environment or your parents are causing you problems, that's on them. But the day you become an adult, your problems are on you. Yeah, it's not fair. Some people have screwed up lives. They'd had screwed up parents. They'd had screwed up beginnings. But the truth is, the world doesn't care if that's the case. Are you gonna sit there and be a victim and whine and moan and never achieve your potential? Or are you gonna set to work figuring out how you overcome those challenges that have been placed in your life? Because the day you become an adult, it is your job to overcome whatever challenges are in front of you. And I can tell you, no matter how messed up your life is, no matter how many challenges you've had, there's always somebody else with more challenges than you. And there's probably someone else with more challenges than you who's made a big success out of themselves. So you can always find that person who's overcome things. And are you going to be an overcomer? Or are you going to wallow in self-pity and pretend the world owes you something because you had some problems or things go against you? And I'm not minimizing problems. I've met people who have had amazing, difficult lives and lots of things go against them. Lots of painful problems and issues and hurts and people who hurt them and people who, who did horrible things to them. But they made the decision they were going to be an overcomer and they overcame those things and they were not deceived into believing the world owed them something because they were dealt a bad hand. They set to work to achieve their potential and have greatness in their lives and they went out and made it happen. And people like that tell me that anybody can do it. So do not allow yourself to be deceived into thinking the world owes you a free ride because it does not. In fact... The fact that you were born in a place where you have freedom of choice, freedom freedom of opportunity, you're able to, to do things and be an entrepreneur or go after dreams and goals. The fact that you're born in a place like that or you live in a place like that, that alone means that you've got more potential available to you than 85% of the world because a lot of the world either lives in squalor, like true poverty, not American poverty, where obesity is the biggest problem of of the poor, but true poverty where people are, are dying because of their poverty, true oppression where people are not allowed to do things because of their government. They don't have access to, to learning and to books. And, and if you go to some places in the Middle East where women aren't allowed to drive or they're not allowed to be out alone by themselves, those kind of places they have true issues and true problems they need to overcome and we don't have those here. So do not be deceived. Face your your problems and your issues head on and figure out a way to, to overcome them. All right, the fifth reason that people fall short of their potential is arrogance. By arrogance, I mean 
people who won't ask for help, people who lack humility, or they have no commitment to personal growth. They think they know all they need to know. They have no mentors, no examples, no ongoing education. Have you ever met, met these people? They, they know everything, yet they don't spend any time learning anything. They don't spend any time doing anything productive, yet somehow they think they know everything. It's just arrogance. If you take one of, one of my mentors, Howard Britton, always used to say, get out of judgment and get into curiosity. And I am a huge believer that we can learn something from anybody we meet, from the most accomplished person in the world to the youngest child to the most esteemed job in the world to the lowest job in the world. If you will sit down and ask those people questions, everybody has wisdom they can share. And if you take an attitude as a, as a student in life, you're going to learn things from everybody. If you, if you walk through life with arrogance, like you know everything, man, you're missing out on all kinds of stuff that can help you. All kinds of things that can make your life richer, all kinds of things that can help you to reach the potential that God's placed in you. And if you let that all go, man, you've just, you've just lost. You, you've thrown away great gifts that have been put in front of you. So those are the five main reasons why I think people fall short of their potential. Here's my question for you. Which of those do you believe are holding you back? Are you really doing everything you can to achieve your potential? Here's what I'll tell you. Everybody has something that's getting in the way of them achieving the potential that God's placed in them. It, maybe it's a behavior of some sort. Maybe it's a bad habit. Maybe you have an addiction. Maybe it's fear. Maybe you have beliefs that you're not meant to be successful or have fulfillment. Maybe you have some sort of physical limitation. You've had some sort of uh, societal limitation that's been placed on you. Whatever it is, you need to address it head on. You need to focus on and say, what do I need to do to overcome this? Who do I need to go learn from to overcome this? Who else has overcome what I'm facing that I can learn how to overcome from? Some people don't even know what, they're, what the reason is why they're not achieving their potential. They're just so deep in a pit that they don't even know where to start to get out. I would tell you, you need to spend that time. The, I heard the best, I, I wish I could remember where I heard it, but I heard the best quote about giving yourself time to think, giving your brain time to breathe, is that that white space for your brain is the oxygen that lights the fire of everything else that's going on around you. Typically, when we run into difficulties or hard decisions or those things, our normal reaction is to just go harder and faster. But when you stop and you slow down and you give your brain time to think and marinate on stuff, that's when the magic happens because you don't have all, this other, all these other things going on in the world, all the noise and distractions getting in the way of allowing your brain to do what it does best, which is find solutions to things, which is give you inspiration, allow you to think. The best thing that you can do is spend time thinking about, number one, what is your potential? What did God, what did God place in you? And how high could you go if you really went after it? Number two, what's keeping you from doing that? If you figure out what's keeping you from doing it, now your focus is, well, how do I stop that from being my reason for not achieving my potential? I believe there's greatness in all of us. And I think some people want to see that greatness played out enough that they push really hard and they do whatever it takes and they learn from whoever they need to and they humble themselves to learn things and they push until they get close to that potential. Then there's other people, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the desire, they don't have what it takes to move past wherever they're at and simple things get in their way and they give up. What kind of person are you? What are you going to be? Are you going to go after that potential or are you going to let the world beat it out of you? That's my podcast for today. I am really appreciative of everybody who's been supporting me, everyone who's been encouraging me. I would love to hear from you. If you've, if you've enjoyed the podcast, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the episodes, but please, you can email me at joe at studentoflifepodcast.com. If you've enjoyed it, I would be very grateful if you would share it with other people. And again, 
please go to iTunes, please go to Stitcher, and please hit that subscribe button so that every week that new podcast will make it automatically right onto your device so you can listen to it. And I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe to Student of Life at iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you go to for your favorite podcasts. Visit us online at studentoflifepodcast.com. That's studentoflifepodcast.com. We are on Facebook at Student of Life. Email us at joe at studentoflifepodcast.com. If you enjoyed the show, help us spread the word by telling someone you know about Student of Life. And please join us again next time. Thanks. <laughs>